My next guest is Everardo Bar Barrojas. Everardo, come here. Founder and director of Prescripto. Good well done with the name. Okay. <laughs> How are you doing today? All good. How's this afternoon? Right, yes, use the, yes, there you go. Okay. How are you enjoying the festival? It's been hard. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of noise, a lot of people, yeah. a lot of stimuli. A lot of stimuli. Yeah. That is absolutely true. There's a yeah. lot, there's a lot going on. But now we get to take a moment and focus on you, what you're yeah. building, and um, explain to the world what Prescripto is all about. Okay. Prescripto is solving the e-prescription problem for LATAM, Latin America. Yeah. So we have, there's no infrastructure back there. There's no, there, there is no existing uh, prescription system that is electronic and everything is completely handwritten. So okay. uh, doctors, a uh, note will look some, somehow like a uh -huh. uh, piece of paper that we might see uh, here. So we have to build the infrastructure from scratch and then the front-end application that the medical doctors use and then build the business on top of that. It's a great challenge. Yeah. Um, are you, are you uh, based in Mexico? Yes. Sort of starting in the Mexican context, but you said Latin America in general is your market? Yeah, we're based out of Mexico City, but okay. our focus is Latin. Okay. Well, what are some of the other challenges that you've seen besides just the uh, lack of uh, digital infrastructure? You know, handwritten notes and something that's related to this is that the health technology ecosystem is non-existent. Okay. It's just starting to grow, but wow. it's not. It doesn't have enough uh, players inside of it to be to thrive. Yeah. Right? So. We see that there is very few sophisticated investors in the area. Uh, startups are just building maybe what was built in the U.S. In, during the 2000s. So we're yeah. very much behind. And it, in, in general, health is slower than other verticals like fintech or uh, insurtech yeah. or other. So long cycles. Exactly. So it, the differences between like the U.S. ecosystem and the Mexican one are exacerbated in health. Yeah. That's yeah. a. That, that's a really big challenge for yeah. us. Yeah. I, I did a story with the for the Startup Health magazine a, a year or two ago uh, with a startup in Argentina and we talked about the opportunities that come out of that situation to kind of leapfrog. He was working on electronic health records yeah. and felt as though he was able to um, uh, look at the US system, look at Europe and bypass some of the mistakes that had been made and jump forward uh, and sort of cherry pick the best and not go through 10 years of trial and error. Do you, do you, do you ever feel that in, with Prescripto? That might be one of the ways mm -hmm. that this whole thing turns out, yeah. but we don't know. One of the things that we stumble upon is that we really don't know how success looks like from a health technology perspective. Mm, interesting. There is no like successful health tech company no roadmap. in either place of Latin America. Like, it's hard, like, we, we, we can predict that some of the things that happen in the US and in Europe uh, will happen back there, but if, if we focus on prescriptions, in the US, the company that owns 96% of market share uh, in, pres in electronic prescriptions is called SureScripts. And SureScripts is owned by pharmacy chains, okay. right? So whatever business model they have between them is not necessarily applicable to Mexico. If we look at the way this happens in Europe and the UK, over there, it's a tax, right? So it's a public company that pays for this as a tax. Yeah. It's also not applicable to Mexico. Yeah. So specifically to prescriptions, I'm not sure that can apply. Well, it's interesting to see how this could like play out in yeah. the long run. What what gave you the uh, what you're what you're sort of describing to me is that this is a this is an uphill challenge for Mexico and for Latin America. Um, why take that risk? Why was this important for you to do? <laughs> Don't get me wrong, the the challenge has its upsides. Yeah. Right? The opportunity is massive. Um, so what what motivated me? Yeah. Before this, I kind of tried to do some academic work. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I did a master's in astronomical instrumentation and kind of experienced the academic life. I didn't like it. Afterwards, I worked 
for a company that was working with crude oil. Okay. I really didn't like that. Sure. I felt like I was working for the past, not the future. Got it. And the final stuff that I was doing before Prescripto was fintech. I was an investor in the first Bitcoin exchange okay. uh, in Mexico. Okay. And I, uh, you know, I liked fintech. I liked the technology from a developer standpoint. I, I used to be a developer. Um, I, I liked what I was doing, but I didn't really feel motivated. And I, when I finished that part of my life, I kind of went back to what drove me. And for better or worse, I'm, I was born in a family of doctors, uh -huh. uh, mother, father, sister. They're all ophthalmologists. So I grew up watching them give people their sight back. Got it. And you know, it's hard to compete with that yeah. when you're in engineering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I guess what I was looking for in Prescripto was having a positive impact. Awesome. That, that was my motivation. Well, that's exactly what you're doing. I admire taking on this, this challenge, uh, opening up access um, in Latin America, and really taking on some of the biggest healthcare challenges out there. So, um, Everardo, thanks for coming to Startup Health Studio, and I hope it's a, I hope it's a great afternoon for you. So. And we'll be watching out for what you're up to in 2020. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much.